Good morning. I'm Kevin Price. Delighted to be with you. Going to spend some time talking to you about you and your business. And I tell you, it's your business to be a little worried about what's happening with days only left before April 15th in tax season. And I wanted to bring on um, my good friend, Paul Carroll. He's very, very helpful, uh, really a, a leader, a thought leader, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to helping under, understand and helping people to understand what's happening in their financial worlds. And uh, with tax day right around the corner, I know that's a factor in the uh, counsel you're giving your clients. So let's start off. Uh, first of all, his website is EfficientWealthManagement.com. But, Paul, tell us a little bit more about your practice uh, to get our conversation started. Good morning, Kevin. How are you? I'm great. I, uh, I'm ready for tax time. I know everyone else is. Uh, Efficient Wealth Management is a boutique wealth management practice based in the Woodlands, Texas. What we do here is using a consultative approach and working with a team of experts we help our clients not only protect their wealth, but mitigate their taxes, take care of their heirs, protect their assets from being unjustly taken, and maximize the impact of charitable planning if that's important to them. And of course, mitigating taxes is on the forefront of everybody's mind with April 15th just around the corner. Yeah, right around the corner. So uh, when you look at the uh, you know, total scheme of things, how prepared do you think your clients are when it comes to, uh, to this issue? I think most of our clients are prepared, but um, it's not because it's simple. We have a, a CPA liaison in the firm whose job is to try to push things along. But the general environment has made it increasingly more difficult for both individuals and CPAs to get their taxes completed in a timely fashion. And it's for a number of good reasons. Okay. Why don't you lay those out for us? Great. So one of the problems that they're having is is the reporting requirements that are made for uh, investments. Uh, a lot of investments are now uh, mutual funds, uh, partnerships, and they have myriad holdings which themselves have their own reporting requirements. And what was happening until a couple of years ago is these organizations were required to report so early in the year that they just, in essence, reported knowing they were going to revise the report. Unfortunately, a lot of um, investors and individuals don't know to expect amended 1099s. Slowly but surely, they're painfully learning that if they file their taxes early and they get an amended 1099, they're going to be filing an amendment. And, and this is becoming a very frequent problem, uh, occurrence, and, and it's become a problem for people. Really, Kevin, what needs to happen is the tax deadline needs to be pushed back from April 15 to maybe May 15 until the IRS and the powers that can be in Congress come up with slightly more rationalized tax rules that can reasonably be accomplished in the time given. Yeah, that's interesting. So uh, are things any different? Are you seeing a lot of changes in the way people handle their taxes and, and what the government's expected as far as their taxes uh, in 2000? Yeah, I mean, the, the laws have gotten a lot more complicated, especially you know, if you're in the energy industry and you work overseas, you know, we got some of these foreign reporting requirements that, quite frankly, are extraordinarily onerous. They are so onerous, in fact, that a number of multinational corporations are resistant to hire American citizens because of the sheer hassle of dealing with American international tax law. And what's significant about that is, of course, American tax code is one of, the only, one of only three countries in the world that, glo- that taxes global income. It's an old law that dates back to the Civil War that really should have gone away a long time ago. Yeah, no question about it. No question about it. What do you see as as far as uh, attitudes in terms of uh, when people want to finish their fouling? Is it going to happen on April 15th? Are people going to take advantage of waiting? And what are the advantages of getting it over with and in waiting? Uh, that, boy, that's a great question. First, first thing I'd like to say is, uh, you know, some people are, of the mindset, if I file an extension, I'm more likely to get audited, or if I file on time, I'm less likely to get audited. There's no evidence of that at all, uh, especially nowadays that the IRS has some very high-quality quantitative tools for figuring out who to audit. Um, the IRS ha- has figured out there's a very low correlation between when you file your taxes and whether or not you're cheating. Um, much bigger deal is... To be smart about this, you want to hold off 
on get, getting your, all of your stuff to the CPA. And unless you're communicating well with that CPA, we've got a problem because the CPAs can't get everybody done in 30 days. Okay. And what we've been advising clients and the CPAs they work with, because we work closely with those guys, is go ahead and get the information as it comes, but make sure you caution the CPA not to complete your return until after March 15, so that if there are revisions and changes, you're not having to go back to get, to get it amended. Um, some CPAs hear that, others don't. And if you're with one that doesn't listen, then maybe you need a new CPA. Yeah. But most of the guys, the CPAs, they get it. And for complex returns like yours and mine, most of the people that we deal with, it's just about a given that there's going to be an extension filed so that you can wait for partnership returns and some of the other stuff that just doesn't show up on time. Never does. Now, and it seems like they're showing up later all the time. What's up with that? Yeah, that, and it's, it's really because the reporting requirements are getting more and more complex, more and more onerous, uh, and, then, and also because a lot of these organizations are bigger and have more sub-entities. And, and, of course, a large organization that has sub-entities, every single entity has to be right before the whole organization can get it right. So it just takes one straggler. And this phenomenon is at its absolute worst than things like huge mutual funds that have thousands of companies. Just one company restates its, its numbers, and that feeds through, and that mutual fund company has to send out a revi revised numbers. And then the custodian, Schwab, Fidelity, whoever it is, is sending you a new 1099. And I dare say most everyone is seeing the, this phenomena, not realizing what's causing it. Yeah, no question about it. Paul Carroll, he has been our guest. He's a regular contributor on The Price of Business, does a phenomenal job, and uh, really glad that you were, uh, you were available to give us some of these tax tips here as we get close to April 15th. Final thoughts before I let you go. Yeah, one, one real important one, thanks for asking, is one of the biggest problems, and we're seeing this with our clientele, and it's even happened to me, are people filing fraudulent returns in your name. Now, I, we love to beat up the IRS, but actually they've done a very good job. They intercepted mine and notified me, hey, someone tried to file a return in your name. Some people, they're not catching. First thing, don't panic. This is happening to so many people that the IRS gets it. It may delay your return if there is a return coming to you, but this is something that they're, they know is a problem. It's a huge problem. The system is fundamentally broken. I don't really know how they're going to fix it. But you can, there's a very significant probability that you're going to find someone filed a return in your name already this year. Well, if that, that happens. I w that is not, not funny, and uh, people need to be very, very aware of that. And yeah. again, Paul Carroll, it, great guest, great contributor on The Price of Business, and uh, his website is efficientwealthmanagement.com. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care now. You bet. Bye -bye. When we come back, much more for you. I do want to remind you, best cut in here does show up over there at usdatareview.com, and this is The Price of Business. Okay.